What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I'd like to introduce my wonderful co-host, the lovely Julie Mitchell. Hey, how you doing, hey. Julie? Hey, Chief. Good to see you again. Good, good. And I got a special guest co-host today, the Navy Exchange Service's very own Command Master Chief, Dana Wynn. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for the invite and looking forward to this interview. Oh, man, that's awesome. Thank you for uh, giving us some time to, to, to co-host with me, man. It's, it's, it's awesome to have a, a, a fellow agency uh, senior enlisted advi uh, leader on the Chief will chat with me. So thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. So, man, today we got a very special guest um, that one has probably the coolest name I've ever uh, heard. Uh, two, has served on one of the premier combat forces in the military. And three, are giving us a run for our money with his own hit podcast. Uh, but Chief Chat, we, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to get our way up there. So uh, without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Thanks, Chief. Chief Osby in command, Master Chief Wynn. This is a great opportunity today, as you guys know. This is actually the first Chief Chat in a special In Recognition of series. As Veterans Day approaches, we are honored to salute our nation's heroes like today's guests. Our friends at the Navy Exchange, Marine Corps Exchange, Coast Guard Exchange, and Defense Commissary Agency will be hosting this special series with us. And as the holiday season approaches, please consider your exchanges and commissaries because it does matter where you shop. We are truly honored to have our guest with us today. For most of his adult life, he served with the Navy SEALs, rising through the ranks to become the commander of the most highly decorated Special Forces unit in Iraq. <clears throat> he retired as a lieutenant commander. Now he's a best-selling author and a podcast host. He's here today to boost morale for the military community and discuss his new book, Discipline Equals Freedom. Please join me in welcoming Jocko Willink. Hey. Oh, yeah. so if you're, oh, go ahead. Sorry. You look like you're, did you want to, I'm sorry. Did you want to say something, Jocko? Oh, hey, thanks for having me. Uh, <laughs> I wish I was as cool as you made me sound. I guarantee I'm not, but thanks for having me. It's great to be here talking to all my brothers and sisters in uniform out there. You're definitely cool enough to be here with us. No, no worries Super there. Cool. And yeah. for, for everybody watching, drop us a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. Share some love with Jocko and you can leave questions for him too. And we'll try to read them live. You can also start a watch party so you can enjoy this live interview with your friends and follow our page. If you're not already, we have chief chats every Tuesday and Thursday. I don't want you to miss what's coming up. We have some great guests lined up throughout the fall. Awesome. Awesome. So Jocko, man, we're super excited to have you with us today. Um, can you let us know where you're joining us from and uh, how you've been faring during the pandemic? So I'm in San Diego, California. I grew up in New England and the Navy stationed me out here in San Diego, California. Uh, and once I got stationed out here, it happens to many people in the Navy. I never wanted to leave. So I'm still out here in San Diego, California. I did do two years in Virginia Beach as well. Had a great time out there, but most of my career spent right there in Coronado, and I'm still out here in San Diego, living the dream, as they say. That's awesome. Awesome. Hey, I spent a little bit of time out there in San Diego as well, uh, but it's been a few years, uh, and I missed the warm weather, warm, beautiful weather out there. But uh, let's switch gears here a little bit and talk about your military career. It's nothing short of extraordinary. Uh, 20 years as a Navy SEAL. Uh, the recipient of the Silver Star, the Bronze Star, as well as numerous other personal and uh, uh, unit awards. What did serving in the military mean to you? Well, first of all, Master Chief, I appreciate it. I can I can tell you right now, my, my career was definitely not extraordinary when you compare it to a lot of the guys that I served with that are still serving today. Um, you know, I did a couple deployments over to Iraq. There's guys that have done dozens of deployment, deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan. And, and for me, what service was, was the opportunity to serve with a great group of people with a great mission. I was lucky enough not just to, not just to always be working with SEALs, but I did multiple deployments on, on shipboard deployments. And so working with the big Navy and I worked with the Marine Corps and the Army all the time overseas in Iraq. And just being able to work with these incredible folks. And, and obviously I had the Air Force overhead watching us and, and keeping track of, of us and 
covering our movement. So for me, be, having the opportunity to do the best job in the world with the best group of people, it was a complete honor for me to be able to serve. And uh, if I could do it all over again, I'd start tomorrow. Nice, nice. Hey, hey so I got a question. Um, so what, what made you join the military to begin with? You know, Chief, when I was a kid, the only thing I wanted to do was be some kind of commando. That's all I wanted to do. As soon as I figured out that, you know, I used to be running around in the woods with, you know, sticks and, and BB guns and playing soldier, and I would burn a cork and blacken my face. That's what I did. And the bottom line is I never grew up. And I went into the, in the SEAL teams, and I got to do that for, for my whole career. And it was, it was an awesome, awesome experience. And it's something that I want to do since I could remember wanting to have any kind of job. I wanted to have a job where I got to carry a machine gun and I made it happen, luckily. Awesome. It sounds like you were made for the military, Jocko. Um, how did what you learned in the military prepare you for life outside of the military? Well, the, the biggest thing that happened to me was, you know, luckily I was put into some leadership positions as I, as I was in the Navy and as I rose up through the ranks in the Navy. And I really paid attention to leadership and I ended up teaching leadership my last few years when I was in teaching leadership to the young SEALs that were getting ready to deploy to Iraq and Afghanistan. And I had come up with a pretty good philosophy on how to lead. And when I retired from the Navy, I actually started working with civilian companies that needed help with their leadership. And all I did was take the principles that we all use in the military and teach them to these civilians and, and how to apply those those military leadership principles into the world that they were in. And it turns out, guess what? Leadership is leadership. It doesn't matter if you're trying to capture or kill a bad guy or whether you're trying to manufacture some widgets to get on the market. Leadership is leadership and the principles that we use, they work. Oh man, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, and, and I see that you kind of, when you transition to the civilian world, like uh, you're basically giving back, right? And, and so I see that you're a best-selling author, which m many people that write books, it's them wanting to give back or give uh, lessons and, and give uh, their knowledge to other people, which is an awesome thing. So we want to talk about the, uh, your latest release, uh, Discipline Equals Freedom, uh, from which our viewers can find at our local exchange, uh, by the way. Uh, tell us about this mantra and what does that mean to you? Discipline equals freedom. I know it sounds... It sounds like it's an oxymoron, right? It sounds like it doesn't make sense. If, if there's freedom on one side and the other side is discipline. And, and if you think about those two words, they don't really, they don't really mix too well together. Free, discipline is a, is a rigid, structured way of doing things. And freedom is we do whatever we want. And well, which one of those two things do people want in their life? Well, they want freedom. Of course, everybody wants freedom. That's what everyone wants. But what's interesting about these two words is if you want freedom, the way that you actually get freedom is through discipline. And that's something that I learned in my career in the SEAL teams. The, the harder I worked, the more discipline I imposed on myself, the more freedom I got inside the SEAL teams, the more trust I earned from my, from my leadership and the more I got to do. And so you can think of it in that perspective in the way you do your job and as hard as you work, the more freedom you're gonna get, but also just in life, I mean, with, you know, another common example is everybody wants financial freedom. Everyone wants financial freedom. Well, how do you get financial freedom? You get financial freedom. You get financial freedom by saving your money, by investing your money, by having the discipline not to buy things that you don't even need. And if you can have that kind of financial discipline in your life, you'll end up with financial freedom. And it's the same thing with free time. Everybody wants more free time. Well, how am I supposed to get more free time? I got this to do at work. I got this to do at home. The way you get more free time you have more disciplined time management. You have the discipline to create a schedule, to stick to that schedule, to wake up earlier in the morning, not to waste a bunch of time doing things that provide you no benefit whatsoever. And if you can have that kind of disciplined time management, you'll end up with more free time. And those are two really obvious examples, but it actually applies to everything that we do in life. The more discipline you have, the more freedom you'll end up with. Man, look, Jocko dropping knowledge on us. Man, we really, that is awesome. awesome. And, and it's, you, it's simple. It's really simple when you kind of break it down that way. Uh, and I think we always take these terms and we, we make life a lot more complicated than it really needs to be. Uh, but uh, I'm glad you were able to kind of break it down in very, very simple terms for us. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. I, hey, I'll tell you, that was a, a lot of knowledge right there thrown at, at all of us. Um, but what one 
tip do you have that, you know, in your book that just stands out to you that you want everybody to, hey, this is the one discipline or the, the one key to freedom that, that everybody should, you know, to start on today? You know, there's people ask me where, you know, how, how if you, if you want to start changing your life, where should you start? And they want some, they want me to tell them something easy to do. They want me to tell them some kind of hack, some kind of little secret that I've got. And that's how I'm able to have discipline. And the bottom line is there is no secret and there is no hack. Here's the reality. And, and no one wants to hear this, but people in the military are a little bit more open to it than normal people. The bottom line is the, a great place to start is get up earlier in the morning. And when I was a young SEAL, look, I wasn't the smartest guy. I wasn't the strongest guy. I wasn't the fastest guy. I knew I was going to have to work hard to do a good job as a SEAL. And what did I need to do? I needed to get to work before the other guys did. That's what I needed to do. I needed to be a little bit more heads up. I need to get my gear a little bit more squared away. I needed to work a little bit harder than the other guys just to maintain a good, decent level of proficiency. And that right there, that kind of discipline, when you start there, wake up early, know what you need to get done that day. Wait, then when you wake up, you go and do the things you're supposed to do. I mean, uh, imagine this, Master Chief. Imagine if you had a young sailor that was kind of off track and you said to, that, said to that young sailor, hey, listen, before you go to bed tonight, write down what it is that you should do tomorrow. Write down four things that's going to make your life better. And then when you wake up in the morning, wake up early and go start doing those things that you know is going to make your life better. Now, imagine if he did that for one day. And now imagine if he did that for one week. And now imagine if he did that for one year. Imagine if he did that for four years or five years or six years. Imagine where your trajectory of your life would be if you actually wrote down what you knew you needed to do and then you actually did it. So that's my advice. Write down what you know you need to do wake up early and go do it. Wow. Wake up early, have a plan uh, before you go to bed and get up and just do it. I like it. Yeah. And if you listen to any of like the motivational speakers out there, I think Eric Thomas kind of comes to mind or Kobe Bryant, they all get up early. They all talk about getting up early and, and, and mastering their craft and doing all the other stuff. So man, that's, that, that's some good stuff, man. We appreciate that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, a lot of times people talk about motivation and, and I write about this in the book. People want to be motivated every day. You're not going to be motivated every day. It's not going to happen. There's no one that's going to be jumping out of bed, super motivated every single day. I don't care. To me, motivation is just, motivation is just a feeling, right? It's like being happy or being sad or being upset or being joyous. Those are just emotions that are going to come and go. And that's the same thing with motivation. And you might be motivated today. And so you get up and you you go work out and you start doing some studying for school. That, that's great. You were motivated to do it today. What happens when you're not motivated tomorrow? Now you're not going to do it. So that's why I say I don't count on motivation at all. It's an unreliable thing. I count on discipline. Discipline is pure. I control it and I can make it happen. Wow. That's wow. just, it's really simple advice, but it makes so much sense. I don't think I've ever heard anybody put it so plainly before. That's so great. Um, so in your book, Discipline Equals Freedom, what is the single biggest takeaway you are hoping that readers gain? I, I hope that people just read the title and understand what I mean by that. And if they start to have more discipline in their life, they will end up with more freedom in their life. This is a, this is a, like every, like all of you are saying, oh yeah, this is so simple. This is so obvious. We all know these things. I already told you I wasn't the, the sharpest tool in the shed. This is not rocket science. If you get up and you work hard and you have discipline in your life, I promise you, your life will be better. That's what I want people to do is go have better lives. And the way you get a better life is through discipline. Awesome. So, um, you know, before the chat, um, I, I kind of made a joke about, um, I felt compelled to do about 10 push-ups uh, just seeing you, seeing you in the background. Um, but of course, you know, you know, being in the military, man, being fit to fight is just super important. And that's just, uh, you know, that, that's part of, you know, part of doing business and part of what we do uh, to, to defend this country. So what, is, what does your fitness routine look like nowadays? You know, luckily in the SEAL teams, we, we spend a lot of time focused on being physically fit and ready to fight and, that I never stopped. I never stopped for one day. When I got out of the Navy, I continued right on with the program. And I do, 
I, I work out every single day. I mean, unless there's just a, some kind of catastrophic incident going on, I'm going to go and get mine. Yeah. And, you know, what do I do? I do the same similar type of workouts that I used to do in the SEAL teams. You know, I do calisthenics, a ton of calisthenics, push-ups, pull-ups, dips, the whole nine yards, eight count bodybuilders, burpees, just all the stuff that we know and love inside the military. <laughs> and of course I, I, you know, I lift weights, you know, and, and squat and do deadlifts and power cleans. And, and that's what I do. And then on top of that, you know, I love training jujitsu. So jujitsu is a big part of my life. It has been for a very long time. So training jujitsu. And then of course I live out here in, in San Diego, California. So we got that, we got that ocean, we got that Pacific and yes, I was in the Navy. And so I'm always going to hopefully live by the sea where I can go and surf. So that's what my fitness routine looks like. Awesome. And also a big shout out to San Diego because uh, I'm a prime Marine. And uh, I went to boot camp out there at uh, MCRD San Diego. So uh, fond, fond memories. I can, I think fond is the right word. I don't know if fond is the right word, <laughs> but, but definitely some memories up out there. I'm sure you had an extremely pleasant time down at MCRD. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. it was. Sure it was. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, so not only taking care of your body externally or internally, if you will, through fitness, what about eating well that's an important part of fueling the body so that you can work out what uh what do your meals look like today or do you have an example of a go-to meal that uh you want to share with us yeah i mean my go-to meal is steak <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah yes if i could eat ribeyes uh, there's there's times where i eat ribeyes you know for two three four days in a row so i'm a big fan of steak i eat salad look this again, this is stuff that everybody knows. You, you want to eat food that comes from, you know, nature. You want to eat steak, you want to eat chicken, you want to eat fish, you want to eat fruits and vegetables. That's what you want to eat. What you don't want to eat is the stuff that comes in the grease truck, right? The donuts, uh, the French fries, all those things. We don't, we, we shouldn't be eating those. We know that they're bad for us. So eating a clean diet is one of those things that's going to keep you healthy, keep you strong and it's going to keep you mentally fit right your body you you know your mind doesn't work well after you eat a donut if, you know an hour after you eat a donut you you're not even thinking straight you're a disaster so just don't let that happen go get some carrots go get some beef jerky nice <laughs> nice i like it so what about mental resiliency? That is also so vital to wellness. What advice do you have for people who might be struggling right now, especially during these unprecedented times related to the COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, I mean, I guess we could say they're unprecedented, but I mean, in reality, human beings have faced diseases and massive diseases and being stuck in places for a long time. There's some political unrest right now. We faced much worse political unrest in our, I mean, we, we, we're in a country where we literally fought each other and killed hundreds of thousands of ourselves in a war. So we, we've been through some hard times before. America is a strong country. We'll get through this. As far as mental resiliency, look, do you have to figure out how you're going to adapt to new environment. The battlefield's going to change all the time. And if you don't change when the battlefield changes that's when you get caught that's when you get killed so what you need to do is you need to pay attention you need to make adjustments and if there's there's the the reality the number one thing you have to do okay this is the new reality you can sit there and say well i don't like it i don't want to change that that sitting there and saying that doesn't help you at all what you need to do is okay here's the new environment i accept it how am i going to best maneuver my way through this new environment and you know, the other thing I'll say is I'm going to go on offense, right? I'm not going to sit back and wait for someone to tell me how I'm going to do things now. No, I'm actually going to go on the offense. I'm not going to let these things impact me and just be on the defensive all the time. I didn't like to be on the defense when I was in the SEAL teams and I don't like to be on the defense now. I want to go on offense. I want to attack. I want to make the first move. I want to surprise the enemy. I don't want the enemy to surprise me. So I have that attitude with everything that I deal with in life. If I see something happen, I don't wait and let it happen to me. I'm going to go make something happen to it. So even whatever we're dealing with right now, go on the attack, make things happen. Make it happen. That's great advice. Appreciate that. Uh, so leadership, man, you, you know a ton about leadership and um, you got a lot, like I said, a ton of experience from leading uh, Navy SEALs. Um, 
what is your leadership style and and uh and what advice do you have for others but i'm, I'm curious to know is your leadership style different in the navy vice out in the civilian world or have you pretty much kind of stayed consistent i know you can't drop and give me 50 anymore uh <laughs> after after you got uh out the military, but I'm just kind of curious on uh, on your your specific leadership style and just giving advice to uh, other leader up come up and coming leaders. Yeah, you know, actually, I I don't think I've changed my leadership style at all. I, I run a quite a few companies right now in the civilian sector. I have a I have a consulting company. I have a, a manufacturing plant up in Maine where we make clothing and boots and jeans and jujitsu geese. I have a supplement company where we make supplements for you know to for protein and energy and the whole nine yards so i've got a bunch of different companies and you know my consulting company echelon front is actually composed of a lot of people that i worked with while i was in the seal teams and I'll, I'll tell you that all of them would tell you that the leadership style i have now is the same leadership style i had then and if you, if you would say the number one tool for me was never push-ups and it was never actually even to do anything to 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 my subordinates that was in any way uh punitive because if i have to punish my troops i must be doing something wrong so i would say the, <laughs> the the thing that i try and do as a leader is i try and stay humble and that's tool that's tool number one is being humble i don't know everything they're going to figure things out before me and the other i think that one of the most underrated tools in leadership is to listen Listen to what people have to say. Listen to what your troops have to say. Listen to what their opinion is. Listen to what their ideas are. And, and don't just listen just to listen to them. Actually try and engage with what they're thinking and figure out how to take their ideas and implement them. Because if it's their ideas and we execute them, they're bought in and they're going to make things happen. So as a leader, it's the same, the same thing I did in the military. Listen to people, stay humble, build good relationships, be the hardest worker, and you don't hold yourself to a high standard because people are watching you and they're going to, they're going to follow your lead. Yes. And empowering your people is probably, like you said, the most underrated tool. And uh, like you said, they're already bought in if they, if they were part of the solution. So great advice. Yeah. Decentralized command. You know, it's one of the laws of combat that I used to teach the young seals. I wrote about it in the first leadership book I wrote with my brother, Leif Babin, Decentralized command. That's that's one of those laws. And let, like you said, like you said, Chief, empowering your troops, let them come up with a plan. If they come up with a plan and it's pretty close to what I would do, I'm gonna let them go for it. Absolutely. If it's not, if it's not close enough, I might make a little adjustment, but I might make that a little adjustment and then let them run. I'm not here to micromanage people. No one likes to get micromanaged. And as long as I train you correctly. As long as I, as long as you understand what the mission is, as long as you understand the guidance, as long as you understand why we're doing what we're doing and what the commander's intent is, I don't really care how you get there. I just hope you do it fast and professionally, which I know you will if you're working for me. That's what I'm talking about. There you go. Being professional. I like it. Hey, uh, so let's shift gears a little bit about your podcast, the Jocko podcast. Uh, what uh, can listeners expect to hear when they listen in? So the podcast, what I do on the podcast is I talk about the, I talk about human nature, but really I talk about human nature as viewed where human nature is most revealed and where is human nature most revealed? It's most in, revealed in, in horrible situations. And so most of the time, what I'm talking about on the podcast is war and other types of atrocities that take place in the world. So as we, you know, as, as I, I read books, most of the books that I read are first person accounts from people that experience combat. And then I've had a, an incredible array of guests on the podcast, people that have served in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, people that have served in Iraq and Afghanistan. I've had Medal of Honor, multiple Medal of Honor recipients on, and they really go into great detail about what their experiences were, what they learned, what, how they reacted, how other people reacted, leadership lessons that they learned that they can take forward, that they can teach to us. So those are the things that I talk about. And that's what the, that's what the podcast is. It really is a, a look at human nature through the lens of war and leadership. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a major part of uh, us learning and not repeating history uh, is to know it. So, it, you know, you going out and reaching out to those individuals and getting that information from them firsthand that's huge and passing it on to your listeners I like that 
Yeah, I, I definitely, I hear it all the time. People will say, I wish I would have had that podcast when I was, when I was a young sailor or when I was a young sergeant in the Marine Corps, or they'll say, I wish I had your book. I wish I had extreme ownership or leadership strategy and tactics. I wish I had that book. And, and I always tell them the same answer. I wish I did too. Yeah. Because we all end up having to learn these lessons the hard way. Yep. And, and I think that these new these new mediums to, to explain leadership to people is very, very powerful. And it's, it's, it was lacking, you know, it was lacking. And sure, if you were there, there, there might be an academic book that was written about some experience in Vietnam and some leadership experience in Vietnam or in World War II or in Korea. But look, if you got a 21 year old Marine, he might not be looking to read an academic book from some uh, academic perspective. He wants to know what it was like on the ground. He wants yeah. to know how to lead those young Marines. Yeah. And so to be able to sit there and talk to that young Marine and tell them exactly. And a lot of times I translate some academic book into the language of a grunt so that they understand. Yeah. And, and, and so that's what I try and do. I try and pass on those lessons, the lessons that I've learned, but also lessons that other individuals that have served what they've learned and how they can apply. How, and then I take their lessons and kind of translate them into some modern language that, that some of the frontline troops can understand. And I also translate it into business language because most of the listeners are not military. Most of the listeners right. are, are normal people in the civilian sector because that's what most of the population is made up of. There's only a small percentage that have the courage and strength like you all do to step up and serve. Absolutely. It's knowing your audience. That's, that's kind of the key there, knowing your audience. Yeah. And I was and I was on my uh, my social media the other day, and some somebody made a comment that says, "Experience is not the best teacher. Other people's experience is the best teacher." And so, I, you know, when you when you talk about that, my mind went directly to that, and I was like, "Man, that that is awesome. That 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 is so true, though." Yeah, absolutely. I, I know General Mattis has a similar quote where he says he's never been surprised by anything because he's read about it before, and yeah. that's the same same attitude. Read, absorb knowledge. And, you know, the young, young military personnel, look, they get massive responsibility at a young age. You know, I've been out on the battlefield with second lieutenants and, and, and that are out there running, running platoons and out there with, you know, fire team leaders that are 21 years old, 22 years old. They've got people's lives in their hand. They want this information. They, they're professionals. They want to do a good job. And that's why I think the podcast is so popular. People can take it and they can actually utilize that information every single day. Jocko, you're resonating with our military audience this morning. We have people watching from all over the world. Angel is watching from the British West Indies. Marie is watching from Texas and so is Robin. We have someone watching from San Antonio. Sonia says, your energy is contagious. Um, Vicky says, thank you, sir. And Marie was sharing that she agrees with you about make a, make a plan for the day, get up and go. So really, really resonating with our, with our audience. And before we say goodbye, can you remind us where can we find you on social media? Where can we go to learn more about your new book and where can we find your podcast? Yeah, I'm really not that hard to find. I, I guess I've <laughs> From my old days in the SEAL teams, I had no social media. I had no presence. I wasn't even in the phone book. And and now here I am. It's real easy. Jocko Willink. If you want to find my social media, put Jocko Willink Instagram and you'll find it. Twitter, you'll find it. Facebook, you'll find it. Podcast, you put Jocko, Jocko Podcast and you'll find it. It's pretty easy to find me. I'm, I guess I, I'm, I'm no longer the clandestine operator I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's I got I got a new mission and, and the new mission is to try and pass on the lessons learned from my life, from, from the leadership experiences I've had and make sure people understand the sacrifices that our heroes make every single day. And I know there's a lot of you listening right now. You've been through a lot. You're still out there in uniform serving. And I just wanted to say thank you all for your service and for staying out there holding the line for me. Hey, that's awesome. So uh, Jocko, we, we got to thank you for your service, man. Cause uh, like I said, uh, it's only, it's less than one percent of the population that 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 raised their their right hand and decide to serve. So thank you for your service, and and we appreciate you for sharing your amazing life with us as well, and and continuing to pay it forward to to the uh the cool thing about being in the military is you get to train your replacements. Like 
and you don't have to work, you're not threatened by uh, this, that, and the third of somebody taking your job because we know we got to go anyway. Like we and we're content on going as well. So, it, so that that's awesome. So I'm glad you're still paying it forward. Um, just know that America's airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard members, uh, SEAL team members, freaking Space Force personnel, everybody <laughs> just appreciates you uh, for what you're doing right now, man. And we wish you all the best from from Chief Chat and here at the Exchange. Um, and if you if you could hold back uh, just a second after the the podcast, I I got to get some information from you. So, no problem. It was an honor to serve, and once again, thanks to everyone that's on the line that is continuing to serve. I appreciate it deeply. Awesome. Thank you very much, man. Thank you, Jacko. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. All right. Chief Chat out. <laughs>